Hi, my name is Phil. I like to talk about politics. In this video, I'd like to discuss the notion that the UK government will be so desperate for a post-Brexit trade deal that we won't actually be able to negotiate one. But first, if you find yourself enjoying the video, then please click the like button and subscribe to the channel. So, in the lead up to the Brexit referendum, the key players in the Leave campaigns told us that leaving the EU would allow us to strike better trade deals around the world. More than a few eyebrows were raised at the thought of getting better than being in the driving seat of the largest free trade bloc in the world, and how it was that a nation of 66 million could possibly wield greater spending power than half a billion. But lots of people bought it. Since then, Liam Fox, one of the committed Brexiteers, failed to even replicate the trade agreements that we have around the world. Country after country told us that they won't be getting any trade agreements on the same terms as an individual nation than we were worth as part of the large EU market. Others have said that they're holding off to see if we honour our commitments to the Good Friday Agreement, or they just want to know what our arrangements will be with the much more important EU. After all, if they had to choose between upsetting trading partners in the UK or the EU, well, the UK is the smaller market. But amongst this wall of reality that we've been surrounding ourselves with, the Brexiteers point to the chink of light projected by President Trump of the United States. He has spoken of a great trade deal, and Brexiteers have trumpeted this as proof of the enormous trading opportunities of leaving the EU. This is despite the reality of the so-called US-UK trade deal being that we'd have to lower our food standards, favour goods made in America, and abolish our tax laws before Donald Trump will even consider it. Another of Trump's conditions is that we have no alignments of standards with the EU, which essentially means that we never come to any serious agreement on trade with our closest neighbours and the people with whom we have the bulk of our trade. And Donald Trump has never said anything about any trade deal that doesn't put America first. It was pretty much the only part of his presidential campaign where he wasn't lying. So despite Dominic Raab, our new foreign secretary, visiting various countries and describing a warmth about them towards the UK, there are no firm commitments for us getting a suitable trade deal from any of them, even though the US president is certainly talking it up. But there's also the sticking point of the Irish lobby in the United States. So just as farming is a huge lobby group and the reason why there is zero chance of a US-UK trade deal without accepting the lower quality meat that kills off hundreds of Americans every year, so too the Irish lobby group will make it impossible to get a trade deal if we endanger the Good Friday Agreement. So Congress are saying that they will block any US-UK trade deal if we do not have a suitable system in place in Ireland. So if we leave the EU without a deal, then Trump is happy to screw us over with a trade deal that means we increase imports from the US, sell off our NHS to them, and hand over vast sums of public money to American companies in other areas as well. But Congress will veto it. If we do agree suitable arrangements with Ireland, then Congress will be happy, but Trump will not. Either way, we won't be getting a quick trade deal even if the President and Congress were not at odds, I could talk about the time taken to negotiate a trade deal, but actually that can be done fairly quickly if you're desperate and if we assume that Boris Johnson doesn't bother negotiating and just accepts whatever the US will give us so that he can say he has a trade deal, it would still take time to implement it. We'd have to change quite a lot of our laws in order to comply with American demands, you know, in, in the interest of taking back control. And our own parliament would not give those a smooth ride at all. In fact, with the parliamentary arithmetic as it is at the moment, you can't imagine he'd get any of them through. So without Johnson somehow getting himself a working majority in parliament by winning a general election, he has no chance of a quick trade deal with the US on those grounds, or anyone else on the grounds that other countries are not run by lunatics. Now, I'd like to say that agreeing a rubbish trade deal should still shine a light onto the Brexit light. It's all right getting a quick trade deal, but if it's absolute bobbins, that still exposes it all, doesn't it? If we agree a US trade deal that is poorer than the one we have right now, and more especially poorer than the one that the EU will eventually get, we could expose the lies told to us about the benefits of leaving the EU. But the popular press would back the deals as being better and people will swallow it. If Brexit has shown anything, it's just how pathetic the truth is as a force in our society against people saying what the country want to hear. So to gain the support of Parliament for any changes needed to comply with the terms of a trade deal with any nation, the government will have to negotiate a good trade deal. 
This is where it gets difficult. The UK will be desperate to agree a quick trade deal and they can't take the usual years over it because they all said it would be quick and easy to do. If they try saying that all oh, you know, these things take time, that will be damaging not only for their rhetoric, but also our current trading position. Leaving the EU without a deal means we lose deals worth almost all of our international trade in one fell swoop. Not easy to keep a lid on the consequences of that. But the whole world will be very tough in negotiations. They know we will be desperate, both economically and politically. So desperate that many experienced people around the world, including in the United States, have been saying that it will be impossible for us to negotiate a trade deal. The other thing is, how long will we wait? Under Boris Johnson's plans on November the 1st, we have no trade agreement with most of our major trading partners. And under his plans to get a US trade deal, he wants us to have no agreement with countries where the trade dwarfs that of the US. I mean, if you just take Germany and the Netherlands alone, then our trade with them beats that of the US. And that's without counting our other close trading partners such as France and Ireland. So we get to summer 2020 and we still don't have a post-Brexit trade deal. The economy is knackered, imports are ridiculously expensive, including food and fuel. Investment in the UK isn't picking up. Boris Johnson will be desperately trying to agree to whatever terms Trump gives us. But Congress are blocking it. Our own parliament too is not allowing the changes to the law that would be necessary for that. So sure, the Tory newspapers will still be blaming the EU, our own parliament, maybe even the US Congress for this. But if it gets to that point, what will the people really be thinking? They were told leaving the EU would be great for Britain. During three and a half years that we were in the process of leaving, the value of the pound dropped, investment all but dried up, whole industries were laid asunder, but the Leave supporters were told that's just because we hadn't left yet. All turn around as soon as we leave. So what acts of desperation will Johnson turn to then? The former US Treasury Secretary said, Britain has no leverage. Britain is desperate. It needs an agreement very soon. When you have a desperate partner, that's when you strike the hardest bargain. He then said, we have an economic conflict with China and even on top of that, the deterioration of the pound is going to further complicate the negotiating picture. What he means by that is that Trump wants to favour American made goods in the trade agreement. But if there's a weak pound, that makes our goods much cheaper. So the United States will slap down their America first trade proposals on the desk in front of Boris Johnson and say, take it or leave it. He will hungrily accept whatever it is and make sure that the Daily Mail and the Telegraph promote it as a great deal for Britain. But it will then be blocked by legislative assemblies, whether Congress in the United States or Parliament in the United Kingdom. And it could do that even if there weren't any changes to the law necessary, which there has to be for the intended US trade deal. Because although the government arranges trade agreements, Parliament still has to ratify them. And if Johnson just accepts the trade deal on offer without any negotiation, civil servants will be leaking the hell out of anything that exposes the stitch up for the country that it would be representing as well. So although our post-Brexit government will definitely be desperate enough to do anything to convince us that we are getting trade deals outside of the EU, and they will somehow con us into thinking they're better, no amount of desperation will actually allow them to get a trade deal with the only country that's even pretending to want to give us one in the event of a no-deal Brexit. So I hope you found the video interesting. If you'd like to support the channel further, then please click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.